Hello, wherever you are in the world, today is a great day to be alive. I want to welcome you to our very first ever Fight Club! <laughs> we will see in this series Pulse Chain pitted against other Layer 1 solutions. And my question is, the question on all of our lips is, who's the lot way? <laughs> Pulse Chain, as we know, is a fork of the entire Ethereum network state. For more information, please check out PulseChain.com. In the ring, ladies and gentlemen, is Pulse Chain versus Solana. Pulse Chain is the new kid on the block. The founder is Richard Hart, the genius inventor of Hex. Testnet for Pulse Chain is expected in the next four to eight weeks. Entry to Pulse Chain was offered to anyone and everyone who participated in the sacrifice phase and not just reserved for a handful of already wealthy venture capitalists. Solana has been weighing into the blockchain scene since 2017. It's been developed by a team with a vast amount of technical experience and initially was started through venture capitalist funding from companies such as Multicoin Capital. Scalability! Pulse Chain is the first ever blockchain to be launched for. It will be a duplicate of the current Ethereum network state. Now, what we do know is that some ERC20 smart contracts will be adopting Pulse Chain, but of course, not all dApps will adopt the Pulse Chain at launch. We have indications from a number of projects that they intend to build on the Pulse Chain network. It is going to take some time for the Pulse Chain to actually fill up. And in the event of it being full, we there are a number of layer two options that could be adopted, such as sidechain sharding, multi chains or multi partitions. Now, clearly, users will need to be onboarded first before looking to implement any of these solutions. Now, Solana scales as a layer one blockchain at the rate of Moore's law, which states that processing speed doubles every two years. Therefore, the architecture of Solana will never need sidechains or, or any other layer two solutions. Speed. Now, what we do know in terms of speed for Pulse Chain is it will be faster than Ethereum. Ethereum currently produces a block every 13 seconds, and it's expected that Pulse Chain will produce a block at a maximum of three seconds. Now, Pulse Chain will be faster than Ethereum, but it will be slower than Solana. Solana is probably one of the world's fastest blockchains as it currently stands, being able to produce a block every 400 milliseconds and has transaction speeds of over 50,000 per second. Solana indeed is fast. It's already surpassed Ethereum in terms of block count and could be said to be the world's first web count blockchain. Security! Pulse Chain is proof of delegated stake, which is a battle-tested method of securing a blockchain. It's the method that has been adopted by a number of other uh, well-known blockchains such as Cosmos, Neos, Quantum and Binance Smart Chain. Now, proof of stake is a method of securing decentralized blockchain networks by allowing people who hold that blockchain coins to validate transaction and blocks. Now, Solana has a number of innovative, notable features and we'll concentrate on just a few of those in this video. But Solana is the first ever blockchain to be based on proof of history. Now, the proof of history is not a consensus algorithm like proof of work or proof of stake, but proof of history is what Solana will use to secure the network. Effectively, it's like having a cryptographic clock which allows nodes to agree on a time and order of events without the nodes actually having to talk to each other. Solana's mainnet is still in beta form and there's still some things to be worked out on the Solana network. Code. Well, Pulse Chain is being developed using Solidity, which is the same language as is used for Ethereum. So smart contracts which exist on the Ethereum network that want to adopt the Pulse Chain network will simply need to make a few small changes to their front ends to be able to operate on the chain. Solana's flagship program language is Rust. Now, Rust has existed for about 12 years and um, it normally takes about 10 years in the software industry to refine a language. And Rust probably got into its stride about three to four years ago. It's a fast growing language. It's liked by a lot of development uh, developers, but the code is still being actively developed. Validators. 
on Pulse Chain, there will be 33 validators. And validators will be those who will hold the largest amount of tokens. And holders of the Pulse Chain token can delegate and stake their tokens with the different delegators. Now, it is true to say that there will be some, it will look like there will be some centralization at the outset of the Pulse Chain network. And this is no different from what happened on the Binance Smart Chain, which has 21 validators. And um, it made no impact on the success of the network. Over the course of time, I'm sure it is hoped that um, there will be a global network of around 33 validators. Solana has a network of 600 validators. Now, whilst anyone can be a validator on the Solana network, there is a high barrier to entry. And currently it looks like there is a lot of centralization on the uh, Solana network. Fees. The fee structure on the Pulse chain is not currently known. However, it is known that it will be far cheaper, significantly cheaper than the fees on the Ethereum network. For the Pulse chain was created in order to solve the problem of the high gas fees on the Ethereum network, and many people sacrificed as a political statement um, against the, um, as a protest really, against the rising gas fees on the Ethereum network. Now, if we can compare it with anything, we can certainly look at what the fees are on the Binance smart chain, which uses a similar um, consensus algorithm to secure the network. On the Binance Smart Chain, currently fees are around about 20 cents per transaction. So this is uh, significantly cheaper to fees on the Ethereum network where they can be up to $80, $2,000, depending on the congestion on the actual network. On Solana, the fees are cheap, with it costing up to $10 for 1 million transactions. Both the Solana and the um, Pulse Chain Network will be incredibly great for DeFi, for trading, for gaming, and for the emerging NFT market. There is one major issue left for us to discuss, and this issue will determine who will take the number one spot of the leading blockchain. And that issue is this, adoption. You see, it's all very well to be a really great blockchain and to use a novel consensus algorithm. But if you don't have any users, what use is that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we do know that Solana has seen a growing rise in popularity. A number of DEXs have developed on the Solana network. It has now trading platforms. It has NFT marketplace. It has gaming coins coming on board. And there's a lot of interest from venture capitalists. But Pulse Chain, by comparison, well, Pulse Chain will be the biggest airdrop to ever take place in crypto history. And I'm going to be straight with you. I don't know what can create the network effect like giving people free money. Mm -hmm. You heard me right. Free cash. You see, what that will cause people to do, na 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 na, is to go over to the Pulse chain to investigate the free money that they've been given. And then when they're investigating, they'll probably use the Pulse chain network either to transact out of those coins and, and, and change it into fiat or perhaps to even buy more coins. But as they use the system and they see how easy it is, how quick it is, how cheap it is, mm -hmm, I think we're going to see adoption at a faster rate than our minds can even contemplate. So if this is a two horse race, which indeed the blockchain isn't, it's going to be a multi chain world. But someone has to be number one. I'm going to tell you who I'm putting my money on. Now, for more information, please check out the Pulse Chain Telegram group. Like, subscribe, share and comment. God bless you.